Hi everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a concept called continuity. Um, so this is something that I typically spend a little bit longer on, but considering that this quarter is a whole week shorter than usual, um, I decided to kind of keep it pretty quick in talking about this topic. Um, so today's video is really the only video where we're going to be explicitly talking about continuity. So I want to start by telling you what it means for a function to be continuous. So we're going to have a couple of different definitions for this. Um, the first one is going to be a more like intuitive definition, and then later we'll get to a more like precise mathematical definition. So a function, it's kind of what it sounds like. So when I hear continuous, I think, you know, it doesn't stop. So a function is called continuous if it can be drawn, or more technically, if its graph can be drawn, if it can be drawn um, without lifting your pen. So an example of a continuous function could look something like this. This is a continuous function. You know, it goes up, it goes down, it has different kind of shapes to it, but it never kind of breaks apart. There's no place where the function, where I would have to stop drawing the function as I'm drawing it. So in this case, this function that I graphed down here, this is a function that would be um, continuous and specifically when we're talking about functions being continuous or not. So if you just say it's continuous, that means that it's continuous on all real numbers. But sometimes you get more specific and actually say that. So I could say continuous. So this is interval notation. Hopefully you remember that from pre-calculus. Um, interval notation for all numbers. So let's look at an example of a function that is not continuous. So let's call this function f of x. So we'll get more specifically into what's going on with this function in a second, but just to kind of show you why this is not continuous. So if we tried to draw this, you know, with, without lifting your pen, like you would immediately run into issues, right? Because you would have to stop and pick up again here. Um, and then additionally, at this area on the graph, we see that it's kind of split apart. So that's also how it can fail to be continuous. Um, at this part of the graph, we have a hole. So again, you'd have to stop as you're graphing it. And then here we have a point that is actually removed from the graph. Um, and so all of those are places where the graph fails to be continuous. Um, if you look at what's going on here, so this, this part of the graph has kind of like a corner, that's actually fine. So this, this part of the graph would actually consider continuous. Um, and we'll get to that a little bit later. So we would say that this function f of x I don't think what color I want to use. Let's use blue. So um, f of x is not continuous at um, x is equal to 1, right? That's the first place that things kind of fall apart. Um, it's not continuous at x is equal to 3. That's the next place, next place that things kind of fall apart. It's not continuous at x is equal to 5. And it's also not continuous at x is equal to 8. So overall, you would not say f of x is continuous. You could say it's continuous on certain parts of the graph, but overall it's not because it has these issues. Um, and there's kind of a, a, more, a way that's more typical of saying what I, I just wrote in blue, which is that you would say that f of x has discontinuities. So anytime the graph is not continuous, another way of saying that is saying that the graph has a discontinuity at um, x is equal to 1, x is equal to 3, x is equal to 5, and x is equal to 8. So I want to tell you kind of what different types of discontinuities we have in here. And I guess there's, there's probably something I should have written above here. Um, so maybe let me just add on to our initial definition here. So I said it's called continuous if it can be drawn without lifting your pen. Um, so a continuous function has no breaks, so no kind of gaps in the graph. Um, it has no holes. 
and it has no vertical asymptotes. So those are all examples of, of things that can make your graph not be continuous. So we can see that this graph down here has all of that stuff going on. So there's names for those different types of discontinuities. So if you have a vertical asymptote, that is what's sometimes referred to as a um, infinite discontinuity. And I'm not going to like test you on these different names for the uh, discontinuities, but just to kind of tell them to you at least once. So if you have a vertical asymptote, that's called an infinite discontinuity. Um, if you have a place in your graph, like uh, at three, where the graph is literally like broken apart, that's what's called a jump discontinuity. And then both here and here, it's a little bit different. One of them is just a hole and one of them is a hole where there's like another extra point. But both of these are called removable discontinuities. So a removable discontinuity is basically a, a discontinuity where it's just like one point that I've messed up. Right, like, sorry, I'm having trouble spelling right now. Discontinuity. Yes, that's it. Um, so whereas like, if you look at the vertical asymptote, it's completely broken apart, right? Part of it's going down, part of it's going up. You would have to like really change the graph in order to fix that. And then same thing with the, the jump discontinuity, which is here, those pieces of the graph are like far apart. You would have to actually bend the graph to bring them together. Whereas the two um, removal discontinuities, they're really just an issue at like one little spot. So there's just like one point that is really causing the issue. And so that's why it's called removable discontinuity. Basically, you could kind of remove the issue just by filling in that hole in the graph. Okay, so um, I just want to bring up some other examples. So I cannot figure out how to stop making this thing come up. If anyone has any advice on that, feel free to drop it in the comments for me because I don't I don't know what the deal is with that. I can't figure out how to get it to come up so I can then like see what it is and, and figure out how to deal with it. it. Only comes up when I'm in the middle of making a video. Anyway, um, so up here we have you know I kind of cooked up this like weird function that has a lot of issues. This is a piecewise function, right? There would be no way to write down this function or a function that has this graph without using pieces. It's, it's not like a sine graph or a, a polynomial or anything like that. So most functions, um, so basically the same list of functions that I wrote down the other day. Um, so polynomials, oops. so polynomials, um, rational functions, Um, radical functions, um, so radical functions are like square root functions, uh, let's see what else I have, uh, trigonometric functions, uh, inverse trig functions, um, exponential functions, Uh, and logarithmic functions, and then any kind of combination of these that you can come up with. So you can like add them together, or compose them, or subtract them, multiply them, whatever. Any kind of combination of these kind of typical nice function building blocks. Um, these functions are all continuous. At all x values in their domains. So remember, the domain of a function is basically the set of all x values that you're allowed to plug in, the, the set of all that x values where a function is defined. So for example, um, let's say we had the function f of x is equal to 5 times sine of 2x. So the domain of a sine function is all real numbers, right? There's nothing that you could plug in that would make this go wrong. So this function is continuous 
on all real numbers. So you could say negative infinity to positive infinity. Whereas if you take a function like g of x is equal to x over x plus 1, let's say. So that function is a, a rational function. Its domain is everything except for what makes the denominator 0. So this function would be, um, we could kind of two different ways. I'll write it two different ways. So we could say continuous on, um, let me write it in interval notation. So if you wanted to say all real numbers except for negative 1, because right, negative 1 is the number that would make this undefined, you could say negative infinity up to negative 1, union negative 1 up to infinity. And by the way, interval notation is one of those that, that I definitely do expect that you know how to work with. So maybe consider this a, a first warning that if you forget how interval notation works, then you probably want to um, take a little bit of time to review that because it will be coming up a little later in the quarter, um, quite a bit actually. So here we're just saying the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, except for we're taking out negative one. So you could either say that this is continuous on this interval, or you could say it has a discontinuity at x is equal to negative 1. So basically, what are we saying here? We're saying that for, um, for these nice types of functions that we typically deal with, that can be written down as just like one function, if you're trying to figure out if they're continuous or not, you really just have to look at the domain. And they're going to be continuous everywhere except for the numbers that are not in the domain. So um, for example, this, this second function, well, it would have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. And so if it has a vertical asymptote, that's why it's not continuous there. Or you could have a function that has a hole in it. And it would also not be continuous. So just by figuring out where is it undefined, that's enough to figure out where is it not continuous. So for piecewise functions, um, there's a little bit more to think about. So I'll just kind of write down. And then next we'll get to kind of this more like formal definition of, um, of continuity. So um, for piecewise functions, so maybe let me just say this a little differently. Um, so if f of x is a piecewise function, you, you would want to look at, you know, if there are any numbers where it's undefined, then that would be like one possibility for, for where it's discontinuous. But you also want to look at the places where it's kind of um, connected together. So how did I say this here? I said they may be discontinuous. For if fx is a piecewise function, f of x may be discontinuous or have a discontinuity, would be the other way to say that, um, at its transition points. So when I say transition points, I basically mean, you know, when you have a piecewise function, you're like taking different functions and sticking them together. Um, and so those places where you're kind of going from one equation to the other, those are the places where there's potential for it to be discont discontinuous. So maybe let me just write down an example. We'll come back to this later. But like, for example, if you had the function, um, let's say f of x is equal to um, x plus 1 if x is less than 0, and then it's equal to e to the x if x is greater than or equal to 0, you would want to check, and we'll, we'll get back to this and we'll see that actually this is discontinuous, or actually, sorry, this one is continuous um, at, uh, at x is equal to 0. But this could be discontinuous at x is equal to 0. In this case, it's not. But it could be. Like what I'm trying to say here is that where, wherever you're kind of stitching the two things together, that's the place that you would want to check. Um, okay, so let me give you now the kind of formal definition of, of continuity. So let me go to a new page here. And we're going to use this example again. So I'm going to put it down there. So this is our formal definition.
So a function f of x is continuous at a number a, so at x is a, if the limit as x approaches a of the function agrees with what the function actually does when you plug in a. So basically, another way of saying this, using the same language we talked about before, is that if you can just use direct substitution and you get the same thing, then it's continuous. So the way I would think about this definition is that the limit, like the limit part of this, so the way that we've talked about limits in this class is that limits don't really think about like what's happening at a particular value, right? The limit doesn't care about what's happening at x is equal to a. This, the, the limit kind of tells you like, where is the function heading? So where the function, or I said, where f of x is heading when it's close to a, right? Like where, where does the graph look like it's going? And then what is f of a? That's like the actual point at x is equal to a. So if those two things agree with each other, that means it's continuous because it's like, well, the graph is kind of heading this way and then it's filled in exactly where you'd expect it to be. Whereas if it's not continuous, you'll see a situation where either the limit doesn't exist, that's one possibility, um, or the function is undefined at that point, or you could have a situation where the limit exists, but the, the value of the function doesn't actually coincide with the limit. And so that would mean that it's kind of not heading the way you'd expect, which means it has a discontinuity. So I wanna look at um, a couple of examples on here of kind of like how those play out. So just kind of testing out our definition up here of continuity with this graph we have here. So let's look at um, a few of the places where this graph is not continuous. I don't think I'm gonna do all of them, but um, maybe let's look at first at what's going on, on at three. So we're going to show that this function is not continuous at x is equal to three. And I know you can tell it's not by looking at the graph, but I really want you to at least kind of get a handle of like how you could use this definition above to show it. So how do you show that it's not continuous at three? We basically want to test, we wanna find what is the limit as x approaches three of this function. And we want to figure out what is f of three. And we want to see, do those two things agree with each other? And if they do, then it's continuous. If they do not, then it's not continuous. So to figure out what is the limit as x approaches three, remember that when you have a piecewise function, you have to look at the left and the right-hand limit. So we would want to see what is happening as x approaches three from the left, and what is happening as x approaches three from the right, and see if those two agree with each other. So looking at the graph, as we're approaching three from the left, we're getting closer and closer to a height of one half, right? That's the, the general trend of where the graph is heading. So the limit from the left is one half. Whereas if we're coming closer to three from the right, we're getting closer and closer to a height of two. So even though there's a hole at two, that doesn't matter. When we're finding the limit, we're just thinking about where is the graph actually heading, and it's heading towards a height of two. And so what does this tell us? This tells us that the limit, the overall limit, does not exist. Because it, the, the two things disagree with each other. On the other hand, f of three, we would just look at the graph and just see like literally what, what is the filled in value x equals three, and when x equals three, f of three is one half. And so if the limit doesn't exist, it is not possible for the limit to be equal to the function. So basically from here, we can say the limit as x approaches three of f of x 
does not equal f of 3. If we had done the limit and we got a half, then yeah, then we'd say it's continuous. But because the limit doesn't exist, we can't, there's no way that does not exist is equal to one half, right? Those are two different things. Okay, let's do a couple more here. So let's try to do, um, see what happens if we do the limit at, um, let's do the limit as x approaches eight. So let's show that it's not continuous there. So we're gonna show that f of x is not continuous at x is equal to 8. So again, because it's a piece function, we, want, we need to do the left and the right hand limit. So we're going to do the limit as x approaches 8 from the left. And we're going to do the limit as x approaches a from the 8 from the right. And see what we get. So if we're approaching 8 from the left, we're getting closer and closer to a y value of 1. So there's a hole, but that doesn't matter. We're just looking at where is it going towards. And similarly, from the right, well, the graph is getting closer and closer to a y value of 1. So the limit from the right is also equal to 1. And so that's us that overall, the limit as x approaches 8 of f of x, it does exist, and it is equal to 1. But to figure out whether this function is continuous, or you know, I told you it's not continuous, so we're going to show it's not continuous, um, we need to also evaluate f of 8. So what is f of 8? If we look at the graph, f of 8 is the point that is actually there at a, an x value of 8, and that's this point up here. So f of 8 is equal to 4. And so what did we just find? We found that the limit as x approaches 8 of f of x is not the same as f of 8. So I wanted to do these two different types of examples because they're different, right? In the, in the first example, um, the limit did not even exist. And so there was no way that it could possibly be equal to the function. In this one, the limit did exist, but it still wasn't equal to the function. So it still is not continuous. So I want to do one more kind of counter example. So let's say that instead we are doing the limit as x approach 6, or that we, we are focusing on 6. So if we look at the graph, and sorry, I know I keep scrolling up and down and up and down. Um, so if we look at the graph, we can tell that at x equals 6, the graph is continuous. It's a little spiky, but that's fine. It meets up. There's no, you could draw that without lifting your pen. So we're going to show that f of x is continuous at x is equal to 6. So this time, if we do the limit from the left and the limit from the right, So the limit from the left we would be coming in like this and seeing what height we're getting closer to. And so we're getting closer and closer to a height of negative 1. And then if we're coming in from the right, so we're coming in this way, we're also getting closer and closer to a height of 1. So the limit as x approaches 6 from the right of f of x is so equal to negative. And so we can say that. The limit as x approaches 6 of f of x is equal to negative 1. And if we look back at the function and we try to evaluate what is f of negative 1, well, f of negative 1 is the point that's right here. It's filled in. So f of negative, or sorry, f of 6 is equal to negative 1. So we can conclude that the limit as x approaches 6 of f of x is the same thing as f of x, and so therefore it is continuous. So I think I'm actually going to stop here. I was thinking about doing another example, but I think that you can kind of handle it from here. So on the, the worksheet for today, 
Um, I give you a couple of examples where I don't actually give you the graph, I just give you a piecewise function. And so you have to sketch the piecewise function and then basically just kind of go through what we're doing right here. So, um, you know, look for the list from each side, evaluate the overall limit, and then see if that agrees with the function or not. And if it does, then it's continuous. If it doesn't, it's not continuous. And I know that, you know, if you graph it, you can already tell whether it's continuous or not. But I just want you, the, the reason I'm, I'm making you kind of do this thing of, of testing out the limit and comparing it is I just want you to understand um, this like more technical definition and why it makes sense. So I just want to make sure that you, you understand um, that, first of all, actually, you get more practice with taking limits using these graphs, just because I think that's, it can be a little tricky. Um, but also that you make that connection between that technical definition and, and the more kind of intuitive definition that you see by looking at it. All right, so tomorrow uh, there will be another video getting into actually um, a different type of limits. And yeah, I will see you then.